What the hell is this? That's like a person. What's up everyone, Savage Gamer here, and this is my review for Afterlife VR on the PSVR 2 headset. Now, I love a good horror VR title as much as the next guy, so how does Afterlife hold up? Is it worth your time and money, or is it forgettable shovelware? Well, let's get into this review and find out. But before we do, if you could do the stupid shit that YouTube tells me to ask you to do so that my channel can grow, that would be pretty cool of you. Afterlife VR is, as stated before, a psychological horror game where you play as a police officer searching for someone for some fucking reason, I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention as the story and dialogue comes off pretty cheesy and uninteresting. But that can be forgiven if the game itself is interesting. And I will say, it managed to hold my interest, but just barely. While I did enjoy looking around the dilapidated and mostly abandoned hospital, I found the gameplay to be a bit mundane for it being on next-gen VR. Looks like I'm walking. Bernard here. I'm almost at the scene. Tell the boys the road is blocked before you send them here, will you? You see, it felt quite uninspiring and, well, cheap like an old PS2 indie horror title, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad if there's a compelling enough game and story to be uncovered. Fuck was that? What the fuck? And again, I feel it barely managed to do Bird that. Shooting. Either. We got a bunch of Bubba Wallace garage door hangers here. The bits of story that you will uncover Shoot. is found through Shoot. clipboards yeah. you can read or don't if you choose not to. I eventually just stopped reading them as none seemed to have any significant enough reason to waste my time on. And I also wasn't too keen on the inventory management system, either as it's completely unintuitive, and while I can't appreciate that they went for something different, I just can't help but think they could have found a much better way to do so. This is the police! Anyone here? For example, any items you find which will most likely be comprised of batteries for your flashlight, heroin needles, I mean health injections, and ammunition magazines. 
you will add to your inventory by holding it and then hitting a button while it's in your hand. And to retrieve your items, you do the same thing, but in reverse. This works okay until you have a gun in one hand and a flashlight in the other. Then you need to reload your gun or insert a new battery into your constantly dying fucking flashlight. Good dude. Because you need at least one free hand in order to access your items right. from the inventory. Had they just allowed the flashlight to always work rather than to constantly die every three minutes, it wouldn't feel so padded with endless busy work like searching for batteries or stopping to replace your flashlight's batteries. And that's just a small example of things that could have been done differently to make it a smoother, more enjoyable experience, at least in my opinion. Oh, fuck. And there are just an abundance of questionable decision making on the smaller end of things that keep this from feeling like a polished, well developed title. I wouldn't nitpick any $15 game for a few small irritations, but there are just so many little frustrations here that it adds up to just being unavoidable to mention. Oh, shit. Uh, is this for real? The shit. What the hell? So many of this game's objectives feel like insignificant waste of time for padding. For instance, you need to take the elevator. However, the power box is missing two fuses, so you must find them. Where are they? Literally right around the fucking corner. Did the game force me to waste five minutes to find them? Just around the corner for any good reason? Did it offer me anything along the way to scare me, or develop my character, or did I learn anything? Nope. But go walk around the corner to pick up the fuses, then come back to put the fuses in so you can use the elevator. But wait, there's more. You still can't use the elevator because the lever is broken off the power box. Now you need to locate the lever. Will this be an epic journey of some sort? Will any revelations come of my search? Fuck no. It's just laying in the sink in the bathroom across the hall. Got it. Now it works. See, it's shit like that that just makes me feel I'm wasting my time with no type of payoff. And the scares. Well, they are basically all jump scares. Cheap and unearned. No build of tension leading up to anything. Just bam, here's some bloody screaming shit right in your fucking face and your ears out of nowhere. You're in VR, so of course it's going to scare you, but were the scares earned? I mean, I can walk into a bank with a gun, shove it in someone's face and get paid, but did I earn that money? Do you see my point? Uh, let's talk combat. It's sad. The gun feels weak. The impact of your target feels weak. It's not exciting. It almost feels like having a chore to do. There is no tactical position that you can take, no strategy to be had. Just shoot the fucking thing that's crawling, limping, walking, or running at you and keep going along the linear, predetermined path. Now, I know it sounds like I just shoved a shit sandwich in this game's fucking face and, well, okay, yeah, I kind of did. Was it bad? Yeah, it kind of is. 
It wasn't very fun, it wasn't very scary, and it wasn't very memorable. It wasn't breaking any new ground. There's just nothing that we haven't already seen done a thousand times before and a thousand times better. But for $15, I think that's what it costed me. I can't really remember. I bought it on launch day and have just been picking at it slowly, I'll admit. Because after 20 minutes of playing, I just think of all the better shit that I could be doing. So that's why this review is so late, by the way. Anyways, for 15 bucks, it is a game that you can play. Sure, it runs fine. I didn't have any issues or bugs, really. But there just is no substance here. I wish I could sell you on this one on some level because I love VR and in order for it to be a success, the games need to be selling and people need to be playing them. But nobody is going to say, hey man, remember that Afterlife game? How about that? Like we all did with the Shark Encounter or Astrobot on PSVR 1. Because everyone who plays this isn't going to have some memory worth even talking about it to anyone later because it's just a game to waste some time if you have nothing new or better to play. And I hate to say that, I really do. I don't like the trash games unless they really deserve it. Then Afterlife honestly doesn't deserve it too much. It's not absolute shit, it's just not anything special or memorable. It's not quite shovelware, but it's nothing unique or new or engaging or fun or even productive to spend your time on. But that's just my opinion. If you like this game, please tell me why in the comments. I'd like to know, out of curiosity, what it was that you got out of it. Because as far as I can tell, all it got out of me was $15 and a reason to do a shitty review video. So I'm giving Afterlife VR a 4 out of 10. Yeah, it made me scream a couple times, but it's jump scares. It's like taking credit for giving your rape victim an orgasm. Anyways, till next time, have fun, stay savage, keep gaming. I'm out. Peace.